Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here. Today I'll be sharing how I made 15 cards using Pink and Main's black tie paper pad and the templates and card sketches from Kendra's Card Challenge 6. If you're not familiar with my quarterly card challenges, it's where you use the cutting templates and the card sketches that you see here that I provide in a free PDF file available for download on my website. If you're familiar with One Sheet Wonders, it's like that, but times six. You use the templates and sketches to create a bunch of cards using just six sheets of six inch by six inch pattern paper. Challenge six runs from April 1st to June 30th of 2022. You'll have a chance to win one of 24 prizes for this challenge, which I'll share more about later. To enter the challenge, all you need to do is post a picture of your card creations in my Facebook group called Kendra's Card Challenges in the KCC6 official entry photo album. I will have this linked in the description box below. You can also share your work on social media using the hashtag Kendra's Card Challenge 6 so others can be inspired by your work. These are the cutting templates here that you'll use for the six pieces of pattern paper that you select. They are color coded and there's circled numbers in each piece that will correspond with each of the 15 card sketches. There are scissors indicating which cut you'll want to make first and there's also arrows on each piece that shows the direction of how the piece will lay on the card sketch. The grayed out areas will be scraps. Now before we get started, I hope you'll take a moment to click on that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. This is the Crafty Courtyard Kit for March of 2022 by Pink and Main called Black Tie Party. I'll be using the contents of this kit plus a few other items from my stash to make these cards today. I will list across the top of the screen any additional items that I use and what company they are from as I show you each of the cards. They will also be listed under the supplies section in the description box below. This kit comes with this very handy zippered pouch that holds all of the smaller kit products. First, there are these beautiful sequins. This is an exclusive sequin mix to the kit that has black, gold, silver, and white sequins, along with some stars in there. And then there's these silver enamel dots here in different sizes. And then this is the postcard that shows the contents of the kit on the back, along with the color palette. You could use this to make a card by trimming off the ends. And then this is the black tie six by six paper pad, which I'll open up here in a bit. There's four matching stickers that you can use for envelope seals. And then there's this confetti stencil here. I've placed it on this dark gray piece of dotted cardstock so that you can see it a little better. This kit also comes with several sheets of glitter cardstock. There's one iridescent white, a black one, a silver one, and a gold one. And then there are two sheets of white heavy heavyweight cardstock. I believe that it's called ice rink. Then here's the stamp set that comes with the coordinating dies. This is a celebration style stamp set that has lots of celebratory images, including several fireworks, some balloons, some presents, candles, and confetti, plus five different sentiments. And then it has the matching dies, like I mentioned. There's even dies that cut out the words, which is really cool. And something new that I noticed this month is that the cardboard piece shows outlines of where the dies go back on the cardboard. I've always struggled with figuring out how to put them all back on there and getting them all to fit. So that's pretty handy. And then there's this grid embossing folder, which you'll see me use on some of the cards. And here's the six by six paper pad called Black Tie. This comes with 24 double sided sheets of 12 different designs. So there's two of each pattern and the colors in this pattern are neutral. So it's great for um unisex cards it's got some great plaid patterns stars dots confetti chevron stripes this geometric pattern here more stars more chevron <laughs> and even an argyle pattern now these are the six patterns that I selected for this set of cards. I picked this confetti looking paper for paper A. And then I picked this star pattern with the black background for paper B. And uh, the back sides have these diagonal plaid patterns on them, but I mostly use the other sides for my cards. I do pull in some of the plaids for a few, but you'll see that here in just a little bit. Now for paper C, I chose this pattern with the 
black and gold stars on a white background. And I know it's hard to see here, but for paper D, I chose this diagonal striped pattern. And then the back side of C has these dots and D has a larger plaid pattern. And then for paper E, I used this chevron pattern. And for paper F, I used this argyle pattern. And then of course on the back side, there's another plaid pattern and a striped pattern. Now you'll notice that all of these patterns are non-directional, which means it doesn't matter which way you turn them on your card. It makes this challenge much easier when you don't have to worry about which way you cut the papers. But if you do choose to use patterns that have objects on them that have to face a certain way, you'll probably want to assign them to papers C and D since those have most of the arrows facing the same direction. Now, if you missed my challenge six introduction video, I will link it here for you so that you can see detailed instructions on how to cut the papers. I won't share the whole cutting process again in this video, but I will share how I keep my pieces organized. I like to place them in numbered cellophane bags until I'm ready to put the cards together. So after cutting each of the pieces, I'll go through each bag and cut mats for layers if the card sketch calls for a layer, and I'll also decide how I wanna decorate them. So I've done all of that off camera. So now I'll show you the process of how I put these together and explain what I did with some of the features on each of the card sketches. This is card sketch number one. I will have the card sketch shown in the top right hand corner. This one has lots of layers. I glued the confetti pattern down to a black mat and then glued that on top of my A2 sized top folding white card base. This black pattern piece with the stars, I'm gluing on top of a piece of gold glitter cardstock, and I cut out a star from the middle of that for another card. This gets hidden behind the pattern paper and your recipient will never know. For the two quarter inch strips, I used gold glitter paper, but because of the layers, I needed to add some scrap strips to each end so that they would lay flat. So that's what I'm doing here. Now I like to use liquid glue when I put my cards together so that I can slide the pieces around if I need to. It gives me just a little bit of time to wiggle it around before it dries and it dries clear. So I've been trying out different types of liquid glue and I really like this Barely Arts glue with the fine tip. It's quickly becoming one of my favorites. I also really like Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive and Art Glitter Glue, but I'm curious to know what's your favorite adhesive to use when making your cards? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, so I'm gonna glue down these strips now that I have them all level. And then the sketch calls for a white piece on top of that rectangle piece or basically a layered look, but I just decided to keep the rectangle piece just the gold glitter. And so um, in order for it to lay level, I added some scrap cardstock to the back, but it wasn't quite enough. So I added some foam rectangles to the right hand side and also another layer of scrap cardstock to the left. So here I'm just layering it up so that it's, it's pretty level because it's uh, those glitter strips kind of make it a little bit off whenever gluing it down. And I don't want it, I don't want it to show the ridges. So added a little bit more glue under there. And so now I am using one of the fireworks that came in the stamp set. And I'm going to glue that onto the left hand side of that gold glitter piece. And I've added some foam tape to the back. And then I glued down the Make-A-Wish sentiment and I added three gold pearls in the top right hand corner. This is card sketch number two. I embossed a white panel using the grid embossing folder and I glued this onto a black top folding A2 card base. I used the black glitter card stock and added double-sided adhesive tape from scrapbook.com onto the back side before cutting out the letters for grad using some alphabet dies by Concord and Ninth. Now this is covered up by the confetti piece and I glued this down on the left hand side of the card base. And now for the big circle element shown on the sketch, I used several layers here. I cut out the largest circle with some nesting circle dies and I cut out a smaller circle for another card from the inside of the black piece to conserve supplies. And then I glued a smaller gold glitter circle on top and added a scalloped circle on top of that. 
which I used a two and three quarter inch punch for. And I stamped the word hooray from a previous crafty courtyard kit and then added the glitter die cuts below that. And pretty much this finishes up card number two. And so this is card sketch number three. For this one, I went with a black and white theme. I used the white iridescent glitter paper to mat the black piece with the stars. And since the sketch shows that strip across the top there, I'm using this scrap square to help line up the panel. I used the same iridescent glitter paper for the strip. And then I used black cardstock for the other rectangle piece, and that's matted with white. And so here I'm just adding some scrap cardstock to the back so that it will be level whenever I glue this down. And then I also added a smaller strip of cardstock to the back of the iridescent strip to make it level also. Now off camera, I cut out the same letters from that Concord and Ninth alphabet set to spell out grad. And I used some white cardstock for that. And then I placed those on top of the black rectangle. And here I'm just making sure that I have this in the right spot. I had to cut off a piece of that scrap that I glued to the back of that. But after adding the letters to finish off the card, I added a sentiment strip that says, so proud of you above that, and then added some black rhinestones to the right hand side of the white glitter strip. And this finishes up card number three. This is card sketch four. This one uses that same black pattern paper with the white stars. It's pretty simple. I just matted it with white glitter cardstock and then I glued it down on top of a black top folding card base that's A2 size. And I stamped the largest firework with Ranger Black archival ink and added some clear embossing powder on top and applied my heat tool to make it shiny. I cut it out with the coordinating dies and then I added this on top of a black starburst circle that I cut out with one of my punches. And then I layered that on top of a larger two and a half inch white circle piece. I used a sentiment strip that says congratulations on the bottom of the firework. And I initially thought I'd just glue it on there, but then I decided to pop it up with a foam strip to give it some dimension. And to make it level, I cut half of a circle from another die cut to add to the back of that circle piece. And then I glued that on there and that finishes up card number four. Now this is card sketch number five. I cut a smaller white panel to be four by five and a quarter inches and I ran this through a chevron embossing folder in my die cutting machine. This embossing folder came in another pink and main crafty courtyard kit. But what's great about these kits is that a lot of the components will mix and match with pattern papers from other kits. So since my pattern for this card was chevron, I thought I'd make use of it. I glued that onto a white top folding A2 size card base, and then I glued the star pattern piece onto a plain black layer. Now for the chevron piece, I cut the mat first, and then I cut the fishtail banner. And I tried to cut the fishtail banner from my layer also, and this was a little tricky, so I tried my best to get it even. And then next I used a black rectangle to layer up the two bottom fishtail banner pieces. For the one on the far left, I used black glitter paper for that banner. Now if you have any half inch scraps of pattern paper, you can use that instead or just any matching colored cardstock. I cut out the little fishtails from the three little strips and then I glued them onto that black rectangle and then I cut the fishtails from the black layer. And then I just glued everything down.
So notice how I use the scrap pieces of the fishtail banner that I cut off. I used that to help make this level. And I also added a scrap of cardstock to the back of that black rect rectangle piece with the banners to make that level. And then I heat embossed the word congratulations using some black Ranger Archival ink and clear embossing powder to give the sentiment some shine. And then I added that on top of the chevron piece. And then to finish it off, I added three gold stars from the sequin mix to the top right hand corner. This is card sketch number six. For this one, I used my gold foil from my stash to use as the back panel. The card sketch calls for a striped back panel, so I'm using my scoreboard to score it every quarter inch. It made it kind of curl up a bit, so I had to bend it back to try to flatten it out. But I layered the star piece with regular black card stock, and I glued that down in the center. And then I used a three quarter inch strip of gold foil cardstock and I layered that on a one inch strip of black cardstock. And I used that for the centerpiece there in the middle. Again, I added some scraps to the back of the black strip to make it level. And then I glued a sentiment strip on top of that that says, celebrate all that's good today and every day. And I used a word and shadow die from Honeybee Stamps to cut out the word congratulations from black cardstock. And I glued that onto the gold foil shadow die cut. So when using glue on foil, you have to be super careful to not have it seep out too much or it will look smeared on the foil. So I recommend using double sided adhesive for this instead, which is what I should have done. But this finishes off card number six. This is card sketch number seven. I glued the chevron pattern piece directly onto the black card base. And then I added the star pattern piece to the bottom. Now, even though you can't really see this because it's black, I put little score lines on the quarter inch strip and glued that on top of where the two pieces meet. And I used a word and shadow die from a previous Crafty Courtyard kit called Hooray. And I cut out the word from gold glitter cardstock and the shadow from black cardstock. And the gold glitter star is what I cut from the inside piece of the rectangle from card sketch number one. Now this sketch calls for any two inch shape. So I decided to use a star die from MFT stamps. And then to finish off this card, I added three tiny gold circle embellishments to the far left of the strip. Now this is card sketch number eight. This one has a bunch of strips. There's two half inch strips and then two three quarter inch strips plus three one quarter inch pieces. And I cut those one quarter inch pieces from gold glitter cardstock. And I used my glass media mat to help me line these up. But if you don't have one, a T ruler will help to, to get the spacing right. And I glued these directly onto the black A2 size card base. And then for the rectangle piece in the middle, I cut this from gold glitter cardstock. And I used that same hooray word and shadow die for the sentiment in the middle. And I ended up popping that up with some foam tape, but I thought it needed some other little something. So I added three black rhinestones to the bottom right hand corner of the rectangle. And this is card number eight. For card sketch nine, I used the dark gray colored dotted card stock that came in the Crafty Courtyard kit. And I cut a panel to measure four by five and a quarter inches, even though the card sketch didn't call for one. I matted the plaid pattern piece onto black card stock. That plaid pattern has the same dark gray color in it. And then for the white strip, I added scraps to the back of that to make it level when I glue it down. And then I glued down the plaid piece about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the dark gray panel. Um, but I ended up having to cut off some of the scrap piece on the back to get it to be in the right spot. I tend to do this quite a bit, but that's okay as long as you can make it work. <laughs> it needs to be a quarter of an inch from the right hand side of the dark gray panel just so that it's pleasing to the eye. You want to make sure that you have a quarter inch on the left and a quarter inch on the right. And then to decorate the card, I stamped and cut out the presents from the stamp set in the kit. And I colored them using some neutral colors that match the plaid pattern. And I popped that piece up with some foam tape to put in the place of the circle on the sketch. And then I added the happy birthday sentiment to the left and popped that up with some foam strips. 
Now, all of the images and sentiments used in these cards were stamped, again, with that Ranger Black Archival ink and then coated with clear embossing powder and heat set to make it shiny. And this finishes off card number nine. This is card sketch number 10. These pieces go all the way to the edge of the card base. So I glued the diagonal stripe piece down to the top and then I glued the argyle pattern to the bottom. And then I added a black one quarter inch strip on top of where the patterns meet. And then I used a gold foil quarter inch strip for the vertical one that goes the other way. And I punched out a black starburst circle and added some foam tape to the back of that to give it some dimension and I'll be placing this where those two strips meet up and again I used the hooray word and shadow die but this time using black for the word and gold foil for the shadow and I used the champagne bottle and glass stamp image that I colored with a metallic gold gel pen and some Copic markers off camera and then I glued that onto the starburst circle and then I added a sentiment strip that said you did it, and this finishes off card number 10. For card sketch 11, I used the gray dotted paper for the back panel piece. This sketch calls for specialty paper, whether it be foil or textured paper, holographic, an embossed panel, or something stenciled, but I decided to go with textured for this card since I'd already used foil and glitter for many of the other cards. But I glued the panel onto an A2 size black top folding card base, and then I glued the pattern piece, pieces down directly onto the panel in the center. And I added a sentiment strip to the center part of the bottom piece that says, let the celebration begin. And then I used the balloons from that stamp set that I colored with gray and cream colored Copic markers off camera. And I glued those to the center and then added some Morning Dew Nouveau Crystal Drops to the highlighted area to make it shiny. And this is card number 11. This is card sketch 12. I used a white card base and glued down a black panel that measures four by five and a quarter inches. And I added the chevron pattern piece across the top, leaving about a quarter of an inch from the top. Now for the decorative strips that the card sketch calls for, I decided to use some border dies from Whimsy Stamps since they are the chevron pattern. And I cut two of these from gold foil cardstock and I added those to the bottom. Now for the sentiment at the top, I used the word and shadow die set from Cat Scrappiness that says proud, proud of you. And I cut the word from gold foil cardstock and black cardstock for the shadow. And I glued that to the top panel. And this is card number 12. For card sketch 13, I used a black card base and a white rectangle panel that I matted with silver glitter cardstock. I cut out letters to spell grad from another alphabet die set that I had in my stash. And I went ahead and glued that onto that rectangle piece. And I stamped the word hooray above it. And that's from that crafty courtyard kit from before. I glued the argyle pattern strip directly on the bottom of the card base. And then I added the rectangle piece in the center. And again, I had added some scrap cardstock to the back to make it level. Now this sketch calls for four fishtail banners and so I tried to use this banner punch to make this process go faster. It worked for the longer piece but the other cardstock strips were too short. They kept falling out and so I ended up having to cut those using my scissors. I didn't have an end to hold on to and in order to make it stay in the right spot it needed to be a little bit longer but I ended up flipping that last banner over since the confetti side was white and it was blending in with the white panel and I really like how the, the polka dots looked anyway. And then to finish off this card, I added three black rhinestones and that finishes off card number 13. Now for card sketch 14, again, I used a black card base. I glued the one and a half inch strip across the bottom. And then for the three one quarter inch strips, I used gold glitter card stock. And I didn't worry about adding scraps to the back of these to make these level since I'm adding the circle element on top. 
it will cover that up. But I punched out a starburst circle from some gold glitter cardstock, and then I cut out a one and three quarter inch white circle that has Make a Wish stamped on it. And then I glued that together and I popped it up with some foam tape. Now I could have left this card alone as is, but I had this extra stamp of candles and I wanted to use it. So I added that to this card also with some foam tape, but instead of coloring it, I kept it black and white. But I did color in the inner part of the flame with some gold stickles glitter glue to match the glitter cardstock, and that finishes off card number 14. And finally, card sketch number 15. This one is very quick and easy to make. I added the two strips to a panel of black glitter cardstock, and I used the same Proud of You sentiment from Cat Scrappiness, and I cut the word from gold glitter cardstock this time, and the shadow, I used some glossy black cardstock. And that finishes up card number 15. Here are all 15 of the cards I made from the Black Tie Party Crafty Courtyard Kit, plus a few other stamps and dies that I had in my stash to make this wonderful set of celebration cards. Just for information, in addition to the cardstock that came in the kit, I used a total of five sheets of heavyweight cardstock in black and one sheet of white. And then for the other cardstock, I used two sheets of white 80 pound cardstock, one sheet of black 80 pound cardstock and two sheets of gold foil cardstock. A list of the products I used for the cards are listed in the description box along with some links in case you're interested. Some of these are affiliate links, which means if you make a purchase, I get a small percentage of the sale at no extra cost to you. And this helps to support my channel. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, you can win prizes for entering the challenge. There are six amazing prizes from our company sponsors. The sponsors are Cat Scrappiness, not Too Shabby Shop, Pink and Main, This Calls for Confetti, TLC Designs, and Whimsy Stamps. Plus, there are several additional prizes. You can see the full list of prizes on my website at cardsbykendra.com or on the Facebook group Kendra's Card Challenges. And you don't have to use any particular company's products to enter this challenge. You can use what you have in your stash. If you want to join in, you can download the free PDF file on my website at cardsbykendra.com. I'll also link it in the description box down below. This challenge is open to card makers worldwide, and you have until June 30th of 2022 to create your cards and post them in the Facebook group. Plus, if you have a YouTube channel and you post a video of your creations there, you'll get an extra entry into the contest. Now I want to introduce you to a brand new membership program that I'm now offering to my channel viewers that helps to support my card challenges where you can receive membership perks depending on the tier you choose starting at just $5 a month. All patrons receive a handmade card made by me each month, a printer friendly version of the PDF file, plus a shout out on all of my challenge videos. All access patrons receive everything already mentioned, plus early access to my card challenges and bonus free printables. This includes some additional one sheet wonder templates that I'll be releasing soon for eight and a half by 11 size paper and 12 by 12 inch paper. This tier is $10 per month. And the VIP patron membership level includes everything I just mentioned, plus a card making kit each quarter that includes six sheets of six by six pattern paper, card stock, die cuts, and embellishments, pretty much everything you need to make cards with the exception of adhesive and cutting tools, plus a color printout of the current quarterly card challenge. It also includes a quarterly live stream session with me for VIP members only. I want to thank my channel patrons so far. My official patrons are Diane Irene Wolfsbauer, Rhea Keboom, and Catherine Wingfield Yeats. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your names. My all access patrons are Penny Kreitz, Kim McKenzie, and Mary George. I can't thank you enough for your support. For more information on how to become a member, please visit patreon.com slash Kendra's Card Challenges. I'll have this linked below in the description box. 
I had a lot of fun making these cards and I think they turned out awesome. I'm a teacher and my graduating seniors are going to love them, I think. I have a few more to make, so I'll be using the rest of the paper pad to create more cards and I'll post them on my Instagram account. So make sure you're following me over there at Cards by Kendra. I really hope this video has inspired you to get creative. Let me know which card is your favorite in the comments below. Also, I recently reached 2000 subscribers and I really want to thank all of my subscribers for helping me to reach this milestone. I'll be doing a big giveaway soon, so make sure you're a subscriber to my channel so you don't miss it. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you'd give me a big thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.